In this video I'm going to be showing you how to build your own hanging gear weather station which is made from laser cut MDF parts. A stepper motor drives each gear and an Arduino takes the temperature and humidity measurements using a DHT11 sensor and then controls the stepper motors. The weather station is supported by two legs and a flat base, making it perfect for a desk, shelf or side table. The DHT sensor has a range of 20 to 95% relative humidity and can measure temperatures between 0 and 50 degrees Celsius. I've designed the gears for the full humidity range and with negative temperature measurement so that you can easily use a different sensor if you'd like to place the sensor outside to measure the outdoor temperature and humidity. The stepper motors are almost silent and can be made quieter by slowing down their movement, so you'll hardly hear them moving if you use this weather station on your desk. I designed the laser cut components in Inkscape and I've put links to download the files in the video description. The components are all on a single sheet in the download, so you'll need to split them up to suit the bed size of your laser cutter. I started out by engraving and then cutting the gears. I always use masking tape over the MDF when engraving or cutting so that the smoke doesn't mark the surface. Once all of the parts are cut, you'll need to remove the masking tape. Next secure the two stepper motors to the front plate using two M3 by 10 mm machine screws for each motor. Also glue the stand support plate with a cutout for the motors to the back of the front plate using some wood glue. Next stack your gear pieces onto your servos with a drop of wood glue between each. Start with a disc with a hole in it and then the gear. You'll then need to add a small spacer between the gear and the front disc to create a bit of room for the gears to move freely. I used a flat washer for each of these. Now let's get the electronic components together. The circuit is quite simple and includes basic connections from pin 2 to 9 to the two stepper motor drivers and then a connection between the DHT11 sensor and pin 10. You'll also need to add your power connections to the sensor and stepper drivers as well as a 10k resistor between the connection to pin 10 and 5 volts. I assembled the header pin connections and DHT sensor to a prototyping PCB so that the Arduino and stepper motor drivers could just be plugged into it. I then made up some DuPont connector cables to connect the PCB and stepper motor drivers together. You can just use jumpers or create your own header cables too. Now let's install the electronics and finish off the assembly of the weather station. You can see the support stand plate in place behind the front plate here. I used a glue gun to glue the Arduino PCB to the back plate of the weather station and the two stepper motor drivers onto the two side stand pieces. Mm -hmm. 
Now that the electronics are glued into place, we can assemble the rest of the weather station using wood glue. Glue the two legs onto the base and then add the front plate to the legs. Finally, glue the back plate into place and allow the glue to dry. Make sure that the Arduino's micro USB port is facing towards the base of the weather station. Once the glue is dry, plug the stepper motors into the drivers and then connect the drivers to Arduino using the cables that you've made up. Try to tuck the cabling in so that it doesn't hang out of the bottom or protrude out of the top of the back area. If you'd like to close the top up, Use the piece cut out of the support stand plate. Don't glue this into place until you've tested out your stepper drivers and connections, as you may need to access the cables again to make changes. Plug your micro USB cable into the bottom of your weather station, and you're now ready to upload the code. We start by importing the library for the DHT11 sensor. We then assign the sensor pin and create a sensor object using the correct sensor type. We then assign the pins for the two stepper motor drivers. We then create variables for the temperature and humidity measurements, as well as the two values for the number of steps the stepper motors need to make in order to move the temperature gear by 1 degree and the humidity gear by 1%. The values set as the temperature and humidity here are the initial values, which should be set when you place the gears onto the motors before powering the weather station up. The gears will then move to the correct measured values from these starting values. We also have a motor movement speed. The speed is essentially a delay between steps, so a higher value is a slower speed. In the setup function, we start serial communication, which is used to see what the actual measured values are in order to compare them to what is displayed during the initial setup. We then assign the stepper motor driver pin numbers and connect to the DHT sensor. In the loop function, we record the start time for the cycle, then take a new temperature and humidity measurement. We display these on the serial monitor and then calculate the difference in temperature and humidity from the last measurements taken. We can then replace the old measurements with the new measurements. We then take the differences and convert them into the number of steps required to get to that indication on each gear. Then set the directions of movement and call a function called move motors to move each of the motors the required number of steps and in the particular direction. Finally, we check to see that at least 5 seconds has passed between each update. If not, because neither gear moved in that cycle, the delay waits an additional time until 5 seconds has passed. This delay can be increased or decreased depending on how quickly your environment is likely to change. If you're in a large room or outdoors, then you could change this update time to be every couple of minutes rather. The move motors function just rings out the movements of each motor by the required number of steps and in the required direction, with a short delay between each pulse to slow the motors down. That's the code, now let's see how it works. Before you upload the code, place the two gears onto the motors, setting them up to indicate the values set up initially in the code. These were 25 degrees and 50% humidity in my code. If you open up your serial monitor, you'll see the first two measurements taken by the sensor, and the motors will then start moving the gears to get to these values from the initial values. Once the movement finishes, you should see a second set of values, and the gears may move again. It usually takes a couple of minutes for the sensor readings to stabilize, and then you'll get more consistent data and less movement of the gears. If you notice your displayed values are not the same as those shown in the serial monitor, then first check your motor movement directions are correct. Then check that your initial values are correct, and finally, you might need to make adjustments to the number of steps per degree or percent in order to calibrate your weather station. Let me know in the comments section if you built your own weather station before and what you used to display the values. 
Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.